So the reason this is important, we're, we're going to be using all of this vocabulary for the entire year. We'll, be, we'll still be talking about all of this stuff in May. You, always at the beginning of the year, students, the students think I'm exaggerating, but then in May we still talk about this stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. All right. So um, we're, this just talks about what, what we need to know. Um, these are these are things that that the standards ask us to that, that we're going to be doing in geometry that we can look at objects we can transform those objects we can describe these things mathematically we can use algebra to describe these things so even though we're in geometry we're going to be using algebra that's what that's what we're saying Oops. that's what we're saying here um, we can measure things we can compare things, um, and we can model the real world. So today we're going to talk about the undefined terms and basic definitions of geometric terms. And we're going to talk about, today we'll talk about point line plane, we'll talk about a segment, collinear, intersect, intersection, coplanar, we'll talk about angles later. So, and just some quick quick history. What we're studying is called Euclidean geometry. Uh, it was developed by Greek mathematician Euclid in about 300 BC. And he wrote this book called The Elements. The Elements was, was really kind of the foundation of using logic in math. It's an extremely important work in, in the history of mathematics. Um, he was really the first person to put everything together into a system and really the first person to use logic to build that system. And we're kind of following in Euclid's footsteps in that we're, we're using the same kind of ideas, using logic to build our ideas one on top of the other. Euclidean geometry was the only type of geometry until the 19th century. We discover, we've discovered other kinds of geometry since then, and we'll talk about those later in the class also. We start with some basic ideas that we call axioms or postulates, and we build everything on those on that foundation. And that's that's really what what we do in geometry: is start with a minimum amount of information and see what we can build. From. Um, geometry, technically, geo refers to the earth, and meter, where metric comes from needs to measure. So really what we're talking about is measure. It came about to measure the Earth. But we're, we're making that a little more abstract in this class. All right. So our undefined terms, the first one, should be in your first square there on your, or in one of those squares on your sheet, is the point. It's an undefined term. Because no, there's no such thing as a, an actual point. It's an idea. So that's why we call it the, one of the undefined terms. It, and we say it exists only in our mind. There are things that are like points, but there aren't actual points. So facts or characteristics, it's no size. It's shown as a dot. Um, it's named with a capital letter, so we would call this point B. And an example. The tip of a pencil, a very sharp pencil, would be an example of a point. But technically, the idea of a point is it has no size, absolutely no size. And if you want to draw a picture of a point, you get to draw a little point, oops, and it could say point B. That could be your picture of a point. It's a little dot. Remembering how we name these things is going to be important because a textbook is going to refer to things by their by their name. And it's going to we're going to need to understand that we're talking about point B. <coughs> so an example of a, of a point, the way we think of a point, tip of a pencil, very small speck of dust. A non-example would be a very large a very large thing, uh, a table, something that's flat. And th those you can come up with on your own. 
And the, the other thing that happens a lot in geometry is we use words that in a very specific way, but in everyday language they mean something different. So we talk about, uh, we go to some point in time, or we talk about a point on the map. So we're kind of the same idea, but it's sort of a little bit different. All right, is everybody good with point? The main thing I wanted to make sure that you got was that it was one of the undefined terms. All right, second undefined term is line. Lines have no thickness. They're perfectly straight. They go on forever in both directions. It takes two points to make a line. So these would be your important characteristics. We name them by two points on the line with a double-headed arrow. Or by two capital letters. Or the double-headed arrow over two capital letters, like this. Or a single lowercase letter like so. So if I were to draw a line here, let me draw one. Let me get a good color, yellow. So here would be a picture of line AB. There are my two points. And if we name it by one letter, it would be that. So this would be line AB or line M. And we have a double-headed arrow to name a line. All right, questions on line. So examples of a line or things that we think of as a line, a long straight roadway, a long straight railroad track, a path that, that an airplane takes across the sky. So those would be examples of lines. Non-examples, a point. A building is not a line, something big that takes up shape. Lines are perfectly thin. So that's, that's why a line is in undefined terms, because it's perfectly thin. All right, and again, it's important that we know how we name lines. So we're good with a line and its name. And that it's undefined. Okay. Um, Plane is our third undefined term. So important characteristics of planes, they extend, it's a flat surface that extends infinitely in all directions. Has no thickness. A picture of a plane would be a parallelogram. We go to, sorry. Um, a picture picture of a plane would be a parallelogram. So that would be something like I'll draw it on the. I'm not sure why, I'm, why it's not letting me. Uh, oh, I know. Um, a picture would be a parallelogram. So I draw. Something like this. That's how we draw a plane. So that's a portion of the plane. And we name it by three points that aren't on the same line. So this would be M, N, and O. So we call this plane M, N, O. Or we can name it plane R with a script letter. So this would be plane MNO or plane R. So a wall, a tabletop, those would be an example of a portion of a plane. Some large flat surface. 
It's important to remember that we name a plane by three points that aren't on the same line. Because if the three points are on the same line, then our plane could rotate around that line and we could have all kinds of different planes. All right, so what is the proper name of this plane? Plane, which one is it, A, B, or C? We want to use, we want to tell, tell, say that we're talking about a plane. So we need the plane F-U-N. F-U-N is just the, the three points. So we're not sure, is that the plane? Is that the triangle? So we want to be specific. We're talking about a plane. So the correct answer here would be B. Is this the right name for a line B-Q? No. It does not have the arrows. We need the arrows. So we would have to put the arrows over the top for it to be the proper line, proper name for the line. All right. Um, so we talked about the other couple of other vocabulary words, collinear and coplanar. So collinear just means points on the same line. Co means together, linear, line, but collinear means points on the same line. Two points are always collinear, because we can always draw a line through two points. If you wanted to draw a picture of collinear, coplanar, We're just talking about points on a line. A, B, and C are collinear because they're on the same line. Coplanar just means points on the same plane. Three points are always coplanar. Co means together. Planar means plane. So points A, B, and C are coplanar because they're all on the same plane. That's what coplanar means. So we all good on collinear and coplanar. The book has really good uh, definitions for these as well. So I'm just, I just want to make sure that we're all that we're all on the same page. With these. All right. A segment, so this should go in one of your other boxes, part of a line that ends at one point, that begins at one point and ends at another. So a segment would be a portion of a line. So there's my segment AB. We call A and B the end points. <coughs> a is an end point, B is an end point. And we name them with the points, the end point, and a bar with no arrows at the end over the top. So this would be segment AB. So the difference between a line and a segment is the arrows. No arrows tells us we have a segment. So an example of a segment would be maybe a ruler. Just a piece of a line. It doesn't go on forever. So notice how with these with these terms we're using the undefined terms to define our, our new terms. So we're using point and line to define segment. We're using our basic building blocks to build up our 
farming piece. All right, we good on segment? Array is a part of a line that starts at a point and extends infinitely in one direction. So array would look something like look something like that. So array is, uh, you can think of it as kind of like a half of a line. So array is a half of a line. The point that where the array starts is called the end point. And we name the array by starting at the end point with an arrow over two capital letters. So this would be ray M R. And I could put the arrow in the other direction as long as the arrow points in the right way. So the, the end of the ray has to be over the point that's the end point. So either of these work for the, end, for the name of this ray M R. Example of a ray would be maybe a beam of a flashlight shining out infinitely in, in one direction. And the end point would be the bulb of the flashlight. And I don't have a slide for opposite rays, but an opposite ray is just two rays that are back to back that make a line. So ray M R and ray M N are opposite rays. They start at the same place and then together, when I put them together, they make a line. All right, so are we good with rays? Okay, do I have a question here about rays? Let me take a look. <coughs> so let me draw this in a little better, and then we will name this ray. So we have So how are we going to name this ray? Ray RB. So RB and arrow points towards the B. Is there another way I could name it? Could I write the letters in this direction? And the arrow would have to point the opposite direction. So either of these is fine for the name of the ray. be where we're stopping. Yep, so we're going to stop the PowerPoint for now and we are going to finish up with what we need to know for today just with regular regular old notes. So there are four postulates that we need to talk about. Oops, I need a different color than yellow. And we'll get some more vocabulary uh, a little later. For now, all we're talking about is points, lines, and planes, and rays, and the different pieces of those. So we want to talk about some postulates about points, lines, planes, and rays. 
The other word that we use for postulate is an axiom. <laughs> Postulates or axioms are going to be our building blocks for what we know about geometry. And postulates or axioms are things that we accept We accept them as true without proof. So there are some things in geometry that we just have to say, I don't know how to prove this. This makes so much sense that we're just going to say that it's true. And we try to have as few postulates as we can because we want to, we want to be sure. We want to be able to prove things. That's what we do in, in math is we prove things. So postulates are things that we accept as true without, without proof. The postulates that we're going to talk about now have to do with what we call intersections. So let's talk about what it means for things to intersect. What would we, what, what would you guess, what would you guess it means when we say things intersect, two, two shapes intersect, two figures intersect. They, they, come together. they come together, they meet at certain points, that's, that's perfect. Intersect means that we have two shapes, two things, that they come together. They meet. They touch somehow. So that's, that's exactly how we're going to talk about um, things that intersect. The technical definition, and this, this doesn't go on your sheet, just with the way, we, the way we talk about intersect in math, is that they have points in common. So where they meet, they have some points in common. So the place where two things meet is called the intersection. So they intersect like two, two streets. When two streets come together, we call that they intersect. The place where they come together, we call it the intersection. So the intersection is the place where they meet. Um, and the technical, the technical definition is the point, the all of the points that are in common. But well, we're just talking about where they meet, where these things meet. And these are our postulates. So are we good with what an intersect, what we mean by the word intersect, and what we mean by intersection? Okay, pretty, pretty basic ideas. Um, so the book numbers all the postulates. I'm not gonna, I don't care if you have to number the postulates, call it postulate one, one, da, 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 da. So I'm not gonna number them. So I'm just going to say this is a postulate. We're accepting this is true without proof. Two lines. If two lines come together, two things that are infinitely thin and they cross, what would you guess their intersection is? So let me draw two lines here that intersect. What would you guess this intersection is? We have two things that are infinitely thin and they touch each other right there. Two lines intersect in a point, in exactly one point. That's our postulate. These two infinitely thin things cross each other the place where they cross is exactly one point. So there's my intersection of two lines.
So I'm just going to do these as bullet points. So all of these are postulates, so I'll put postulates. Two planes. Two planes intersect in. So let's think of let's think of the corner the corner of our room. So this front wall is like one plane, and this wall is like another plane. The intersection is that corner, but we're thinking this extends forever. Line. Two planes intersect in a line. That one tiny thin little place where they come together is a line. And it's a little harder to draw the intersection of two planes. I'll try to do it this way. And then I'll make this plane go. This way and where they intersect is a line. And we always have to imagine that the pictures we draw extend infinitely in any direction. A little harder to draw the intersection of two planes. I think of it as a corner of a room. So that's our second postulate. Two lines intersect in a point, two planes intersect in a line. And we mentioned this before. Um, through any two points, <laughs> is exactly one line. So if I have two points down here, I can always draw a line through those points. So that's our, that's another one of our postulates. If I have two points, I can always draw a line between them. There's exactly one line between two points. All right, the next one, the next one's a little, a little trickier. And again, this is a postulate. The last one, if you need to go back, just let me know. Um, through any two points is exactly one line. Okay? So I can always I always make a line between two points. Are we good? Through any three non-collinear points. And what do we mean when we're saying non-collinear? They are not. Collinear means on the same line. So any three non-collinear points So three points, these three points are not on the same line, is exactly one plane. <coughs> and this is related to the way we name planes. And the way that the, the way that helps me think about the, this postulate is if you think of a camera tripod. They make a camera tripod with three legs. The bottom, the three legs, are always going to sit 
on a plane. So even if you make them uneven, when you set it down, those three will sit on a will sit flat and it won't wobble. So that's why they make tripods with three legs because those three points will always make a plane, a flat surface. If you have four points, the four points might not be in a plane and that's why tables wobble sometimes. A three-legged table might tilt, but it's not going to wobble. So those are our basic postulates about points, lines, and planes. So we have an idea of what points, lines, and planes are, and we have an idea of how they, how they work. So all the homework tonight is just asking you questions about points, lines, planes, and rays. What happens when they come together? If I draw a picture, what is the intersection? Is the intersection a point? Is the intersection a line? How do I name the point? How do I name the line? How do I name the plane? So all the homework questions have to do with all of this stuff that we just talked about today. All right. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, let me um, stop this.